So here we're going to briefly explain why chondrite meteorites are so important and also very, very interesting. We're going to use this diagram from this very nice textbook by Lauders and Fegley. And in this diagram, they are comparing the concentration of elements in a certain class of chondrite meteorites, those that are carbon rich, called carbonaceous chondrites. And they are comparing them to the solar photosphere. The photosphere is the outer atmosphere of the sun. So we are comparing the composition effectively of a rock to the gaseous parts of our, the outer part of our star. And what's stunning, here's a one-to-one -one correlation line. If they perfectly matched, all the elements would fall along that one-to-one -one line. You can see most of the elements do. There are a couple of elements that fall off of this line. So notice that up here we have hydrogen. Hydrogen is in a much higher concentration, uh, close to 10 to the 10. When we look at per, this is per million of atoms of silicon. It has a much higher concentration by orders of magnitude compared to it looks like less than 10 to the 7th in the actual rock. And so that's not very surprising. Chondrite meteorites have lost some hydrogen relative to the sun. They're also relatively poor in helium and neon and argon, basically all the noble gases. And that's not very surprising when chondritic meteorites have condensed out of the solar nebula, things that are very volatile. So uh, we could talk about so-called volatile elements that are easily evaporated. Those volatile elements are not, not very likely to condense along with the rocky materials that make up the bulk of the meteorite. And what is the bulk of the meteorite? It is elements, it is made of elements that condense at much higher temperatures. Not necessarily as pure elements, they will condense out as oxides or sulfides or various kinds of uh, compounds like silicon carbide. But if you look at iron and silicon and carbon and aluminum and titanium, germanium, vanadium, copper, gold, they all lie very close to this one-to-one -one line. So if you ignore the volatile elements, chondrite meteorites look almost like the sun. And this is why we think chondrite meteorites are probably a very good model for the building blocks for making planets. And that's really important to us because most of the record that we see, most of the rock record, occurs after differentiation has occurred. So when we talk about planetary differentiation, we have a planet that forms a metallic core, and then it could be surrounded by a mantle that's made of peridotite or peroxinite. So we'll just draw that mantle here. So there's the peridotite or peroxinite, and then it'll have a thin crust that will be made of basalt for most, most cases, but for older, larger planets like Earth, it could differentiate into other kinds of components. On Earth, we have crust that's not only made of basalt in the ocean basins, but we also have a lot of granitic crust that makes up much of the continents. So we have a crust, and then over here we have the mantle, and then inside here we have the core. But what did the Earth look like before it became differentiated into these different parts? Well, maybe it was just a single big blob. It probably never, never was completely a single big blob. It would begin to differentiate when it started out as a much smaller planet and additional material was added to it. But what would be that undifferentiated material? What were these building blocks before it became differentiated into a core, mantle, and crust? Well, we think chondrite meteorites are the answer. And this wonderful diagram, diagram from Katerina Lagers and from Bruce Fegley in their textbook tells us why. We get that idea in part from the fact that chondrite meteorites look like, like the sun, and the sun is really the bulk of the mass of the solar system, we would expect that on the whole the planets should look a lot like the sun, at least in their non-volatile fractions. So Earth, Moon, Mars, Venus, they might veer a little bit away from chondritic and solar compositions, but if you add them all up, they should roughly look like the solar photosphere, and chondrites indeed do.